Many of us edit audio at home in small, acoustically bad rooms. <laughs> Sorry, no offense intended, but that's really the case for most of us. What's wrong with bad acoustics? Well, the big problem is you can't tell what needs to be fixed because you're not hearing the recorded sound accurately. You don't know how well your edited or mixed audio will sound when your audience plays it back wherever and with whatever they may happen to play it. Here are some ideas I learned from Mike Sr., a mixing engineer who writes for Sound on Sound and who wrote a great book on mixing music called Mixing Secrets for the Small Studio. While the book is focused on mixing music, Mike covers monitoring and he had some really great insights. I'll share three of them with you here. Number one, if you don't have a lot of budget to spend, you may have to use headphones. Now, first, there are some advantages and some pretty big disadvantages to using headphones. First, headphones do not play sound in our ears like we normally hear in the real world. When you hear in the real world, sound from a single source is heard by both ears. And often, one ear hears it just a tiny fraction of a second earlier than the other ear. In headphones, what plays in one ear may or may not play in the other ear. Also, because headphones are creating sound waves in a very small space, which is really just the cup of the phone right around your ear, they have a hard time producing even frequency response, and some frequencies almost always end up being more prominent than others. On the bright side, however, you avoid most of the issues of a room with poor acoustical properties. I prefer to use headphones as a way to get another perspective rather than as my primary monitoring option, but I totally understand budgets. If headphones are your only choice, here's some advice. Consider going with reference headphones with an over-ear design, not on-ear and not earbuds, and that have an open back design. No closed back or isolating or noise-canceling headphones. Open back reference headphones can generally produce the most accurate sound, and accuracy is exactly what you need when you're mixing or editing your audio, even if it's just dialogue. Number two, the room you listen in and how it responds to sound is probably more important than the speakers or monitors you choose. Most of us mix in a room in our home, and often this is a relatively small room. In most cases, if you were to scientifically measure the frequency response and the amount of time that various frequencies take to decay, or that is to finally go away, you'd find that in most rooms, there are big problems with bass sound staying around too long and messing with the other frequencies. You also find the high frequencies cause plenty of issues as well. However, bass is almost always the biggest culprit. The best way to fix these issues? Bass trap panels designed to remove bass are most effective. They trap the bass sound energy so that it doesn't hang around nearly as long, so that it doesn't interfere with the sound coming out of your speakers 300 milliseconds later, and make everything sound muddy and unclear. There are lots of foam products on the market as well, but the problem with these is that they are good at absorbing high frequency sound, but not very good at absorbing lower frequency sounds where the biggest problems lie. You definitely don't want to plaster your walls with nothing but foam because then you'll have a big bass issue and not enough treble. Now I realize that it's not really affordable to buy these types of panels. I actually spent quite a lot of money, nearly $2,000 to really kind of do my room with all the panels in, in the right spots and uh, really do a kind of a bang up job. But even if you can't afford that amount of money or even maybe $1,000 of bass trap panels, definitely check out the education part of GIK Acoustics site where you can learn a ton about acoustics and the things you can do to improve the sound of your room, even if they're free. They also have DIY supplies to help you save a bit of money if you're feeling handy enough to make your own panels. Three, Ideally, you'll have a set of near-field monitors. These are speakers that are made to accurately play back sound and to be used in close proximity to you and your computer. If you don't have any bass trap panels, don't go crazy and buy huge monitors with 8-inch woofers and a subwoofer, especially if you're working in a small room. You'll just make the bass buildup issues even worse. Also, if your budget doesn't allow you to spend $1,500 US or more for a set of pro mixing monitors, and for most of us, we don't have that kind of budget, avoid buying monitors with a port or a reflex design. What I mean by that, a port is a hole in the front or the back of the monitor, usually, that allows the manufacturer to say that the monitor can produce bass at even lower frequencies. And while that's true, there are a number of issues with ported monitors that are not very carefully designed, and that's usually gonna be those that fall in the less than $1,500 range. They produce more bass, but they also produce more bass that hangs around the room even longer. 
The port also resonates, so in many cases, it will tend to emphasize a particular frequency range and de-emphasize others. In short, ports on sub-$1,500 US monitors often create more issues than they solve. Some relatively affordable monitors come in non-ported designs, like the Aventone Active Mix Cubes and the Behringer Baritone C50A. Note that these often come as a single speaker, and so you'll have to buy two of them. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've seen reviews, say, for example, on Amazon, where someone was angry that they only got one monitor. When you get into the pro realm, that's normal. You buy one, so you have to actually put two of them in your cart to get a stereo pair. Now, these speakers actually won't sound that great. In fact, you'll probably be disappointed the first time you hear them. However, the advantage they offer is that they produce sound that is more even and the bass rolls off such that it doesn't tend to linger in untreated rooms as long. So they actually end up giving you more bang for your buck in terms of being able to mix and monitor your audio. And if you can make them sound great on those monitors, they'll sound great on almost anything. If you're interested in going more in depth on any of these topics, please leave a comment below. Thanks for checking out this episode. Be sure to subscribe for new episodes each week and we'll talk with you again soon. Thank you.